Okay, this is the video for Walking in the Air. Um, if you are playing this, you will notice there are no bowings in this and there are no fingerings in this because this, um, I'm sure you can buy it for violin and piano, but um, this was, I did this many, many years ago um, and I did it off of a piano part. Uh, Seth Poppy, who you may have met in an earlier video on the phone, uh, I think specifically the Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer video, um, Seth plays, oh, his sister plays piano beautifully. She, both of them are music grads from ECU. She is a performance and accompanying grad. Uh, she's getting, I think she just finished her master's. And he has uh, degrees in a violin and viola performance. So uh, very proud of those guys. Um, but Seth was playing this with his sister and he was playing it from the piano part. They didn't have a violin part. So I made this violin part up for them. If you've, if you've got the violin part, that's what I did. Um, but I didn't put any edits. I didn't edit the part. I didn't put bowings in or fingering. Um, so um, I do a certain way. And I'm, so I'm going to play it and give you the bowings that I, I use. Please put these bowings in. If you don't like these bowings, I don't mind if you put new bowings in. But remember, this is a song. It does have words, I found out. Um, so it's a secular song for Christmas. Um, but it's also one of the newer ones. And it's nice to play new Christmas music. Um, Instead of just, just the, the uh, hymns and carols all the time, for me, it's kind of nice to be able to get some new stuff. Um, so I always slur the first two notes of every time I have this little thing here. slur the pickup, the little pickup eighth note into the other eighths. Because it sounds like I'm walking in the air. And I also slur the dotted quarters into the eighths. So you may want to look at those bowings and get that. Okay, and then the pickup to the next measure which I'm not sure what, I can't see that far. I've got this really far away, 13, 14, 13. So the, the pick up into the 12th measure where you do the very same melody, but you do it in third position. You start on first finger. All right. Um, now you can stay in third position to that point, or you can go down. Notice I stayed in third position. Three, four, four, um, one, excuse me. One, four, four, three, three, one. Then one, four, four, three, three, one. You can go one, two. If you do that, I would do a little break in that in that down bow. Right. Now the next notes are um. Right. Um. Just make sure you slur. Then you can just stay in first position. You can just stay in first position. Here's some options. After you go, um, um, I do like that because if you're vibratoing, you can vibrate on that second finger. Right. Now, what I do is I, I stop, when I stop the bow, I put first finger on that G. Which makes me puts me in third position, oh, second position. I go one three three two two one in second position. That's just what I do. Then I only have a little short way to go to go into third position for the. And I think that that's effective musically. So you don't have to do that. I really wish you'd study that and think about it. You need to start kind of breaking out of the box of first position or third position. You just need to start doing whatever makes the, the music beautiful and you need to practice that. So um, starting in measure, the pick up the measure, I guess it's pick up the measure 12. Second position. Third. And then the next notes are just a run. Now you can do it all as a bow. I find that uncomfortable. I like to go down for the first three. Up. 
because you can you can really do a nice crescendo. But make sure that just because your fingers are moving fast, make sure you don't use your bow too fast. And I challenge you to do that that little thing without your fingers. So you're going to go G D G D A G D A. That's what your bow is doing. You want it to sound really powerful, even though it's just a just a little run. It's not even a really fast run. It's really pretty easy. It's just eighth notes, right? Then you're going to go. Talk about the fingering on that. So you, the fingering on the run, you're going to go uh, one D two shift one three one. You're going to shift on the open A, right? Shift. Now you're where you need to do B to B go three two three two one three two three two one. Now I, you can bow this any way you want to. You can go, uh, or you can go. But I would slur uh, the dotted quarter into the eighth, but I'd put a little break in there so I can shift. I shift into first position for that second finger G to three, two, three, two, one. Otherwise, if you stay in third position, it's awkward. And it doesn't sound good. Okay. Let me pause my video for a second. We're having a family emergency here. Okay, <clears throat> sorry about that. It didn't seem like that long a time, but it was about a couple of hours actually. Um, so we're in uh, walking in the air, um, and we were in uh, basically finishing up uh, measure uh, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Around measure 20, we had the. Uh, <laughs> what I would do there is um, third position, first position. Third position, first position, right? Uh, so I would I would move move around and just stop the bow in the middle of the slur. Uh, up. Up. That way you're always going three two three two one three two three two three two. You're using the same fingering four times. Okay, then the next entrance is going to be the same bowing. The you can put your first finger on the A and the E string. Stop the bow, go in the first position and play the one and the A, and then you're gonna put your second finger down on uh, on the G and the C at the same time. Now, whenever you have to play across the string a fifth like that. Whenever you're playing uh, with one finger and you're stopping both strings, take the bone, put the bone of your finger, trust me on this. Now, this is how it works for me. Maybe your finger works differently, but I take the bone, the little bone that comes to the very end of my finger, right? And I put it on the fingerboard between the strings. And that way, the, the flesh and of my finger on either side of that bone will su push down the two strings su su that will suffice. To make the sound. Uh, well, I'm not pushing down. Whatever you do, don't flatten your finger out. Because it won't be in tune and it will impede your ability to move. So put that finger down, put the bone of that finger right between the strings on the fingerboard, and let the part of your finger on either side of that bone, the flesh, push that finger down. So um same thing here. And leave that finger down while you go. Leave that one down. Make sure your finger is curved, right? Make sure it's curved. It doesn't change just because you're pushing down two strings. So you're going to come down and play a low one on the E and your open A. And then put your two down. So, and just stop that down bow. Stop until you go. Right? Uh, then you're going to go. That's going to be, you're going to, um, you're going to leave your two there on the E, you're going to put down your three on the A. Then 
then leave your three there and play four on the E, and then take your three and you can kind of push it over a little bit, and then you're going to play that string at that note again. And then I play three on the A, and then put one on the E, then pick up the one and play the two on the A, then I shift up and play one and three, one on the A and three on the D, leave one down and play two on the D. That's what I do. So, um, um, third position, first position, stay in first position, third position, right, and then you're in first position, um, third position, Now, in that measure of 3-2, I like that little slide. And I'm, sli I'm, I'm, I'm shifting the first position on third finger. Um, and I'm also slurring. Make put a slur there. Um, then, right? Then go back to the third position. just how I play walking in the air. So Merry Christmas. Practice. This is going to be a wonderful piece for you to play in the future uh, <clears throat> once you learn it because it's um, a lot of people have seen the snowman which is the name of the animated feature that this song comes from and more and more uh, choral ensembles are, are singing this. There's some beautiful arrangements of this. Um, I hear it every day now on Christmas music channels. So I'm, I'm already playing Christmas music, and it's just the Friday after Thanksgiving. Oh, sorry, Saturday after Thanksgiving. I was ready for it. But anyway, guys, put in some fingerings, uh, put in some bowings, and convince me when you play it that that should be there. This is sort of mature because you put in your own fingerings and bowings. I have made suggestions for whatever it takes to play it. All right? And I'd like to hear it at your next lesson. Merry Christmas.